Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to talk about CNCing this piece out of polystyrene. So one of the things I don't do is every day is CNC stuff. So I do it a couple times a month. So a lot of times I forget more than I remember. And that's a little bit about what this video is about. I've talked a little bit about in the past CNCing polystyrene. And I want to talk a little bit more about it today and give you some tips and tricks. So one of the things, why polystyrene? Well, for example, for this sheet of polystyrene that I picked up, I paid about a buck a sheet for this. I bought it in, you know, like 30, 40, you know, sheet volumes. You can get it really cheap if you look, as opposed to acrylic, this piece here, which I paid about $8 a sheet for. So $8, $1, $1, $8. You can see the economics there. And so, but the issue is with... Um, uh, polystyrene it's it's a little bit like air injected and you really can't probably can't see it even if I zoom in on the video but uh, but it's very tough it's it's a very good plastic to use to make things out of uh, and it's very economical but it machines rather funny now I've done videos in the past where I've machined using a single flute bit and I'm just kind of looking around the bench here where I got a single flute bit and here that guy is so this does a good job because one of the things in CNC you have feeds and speeds so it's how fast are you going to feed the bit through the material and how much of the material are you going to take out because the idea is to chip the material not to melt it and with a material with a very low melting point like polystyrene or ABS which I also use which is cheap too you always run into that problem or have that risk. Now, one of the things I, d I do is I typically push the bit pretty fast. I push it about 150 millimeters. A lot of times I tell myself I need to up it to maybe 200 millimeters a second uh, to get better chipping, but I've had pretty good luck, and I usually push about a half a millimeter cut. So in other words, uh, when I'm milling this, the bit goes in a half millimeter, and it moves this way at about 150 to 200 millimeters a second. This particular piece was cut at about uh, was cut at 150 millimeters a second with uh, 0.5 millimeters plunge rate. But tell you what, before we get into a little bit more of this, I want to cut over and I want to show you the time lapse of me cutting this. So tell you what, let's head over to the CNC, let's watch this being cut out, then we'll meet back here at the bench. I'm going to talk about a few pieces. So over to the CNC. Okay, welcome back. So you saw the t bit of a time lapse of this being cut. Now on the surface, this looks pretty good, right? And I turn it over and it's like, whoa, this is ugly. Now, I anticipated this a little bit. And so I've worked with polystyrene a lot. And so when I created this design, which I did in OpenSCAD, I made it symmetrical. So I can use it this way or I can use it this way. It doesn't matter. You see everything lines up. And these pass-through holes here are actually for wires, and I put two in. And aesthetically, it looks okay because it's symmetrical, right? So kind of a tip there. Uh, if you can and you're working with these, uh, you know, lighter plastics, you know, like ABS or polystyrene, try to make your design symmetrical. So that way, if you get, ooh, this ugliness, you can turn around and put that on the inside. And that's what I intend to do. This is going to go on the inside. So nobody's going to see this. They'll see the outside. And this is actually not bad. So this turned out pretty good. But I want to talk a little bit. And maybe you saw a bit of it in the video. So as I mentioned at the onset of this video, I typically forget more than I remember when it comes to CNC. And, and one of the things that I really have not done in the past is peck drill polystyrene. Because I cheated a little bit in, in creating this. 
because all these holes are supposed to be three millimeter holes. Now I used a an eighth inch bit, so I think it's what, a 3.175, so a little bit bigger than three. Since these are just retaining holes, no biggie if I'm a little bit over, but to get the hole diameter as small as possible, I simply peck drill. What is peck drilling? If you don't know, peck drilling is where the bit comes down, intersects the material, makes a plunge, say maybe a half a millimeter, retracts itself out of the material, makes another plunge until it goes all the way through. So it continues and makes a pecking motion, in other words, and hence referred to as peck drilling. Well, the problem that uh, I created for myself, and you can kind of see a little bit of it here, is when I did the peck drilling, I allowed it to keep the standard settings for peck drilling. And most of the time, if I do peck drilling, it's on acrylic or harder material. So I really want to take slow and deliberate cuts to allow the bit cool down time in its plunge and also allow for clearing a material in, in the peck operation. Well, the problem with that is it quick, very quickly built up material on the end of this bit. And, you know, as you can see here, this is pretty nasty. So it started me down the wrong path because one of the first things I did was I did the peck drill operation. I told it to go peck out all these holes, just boom, 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 before cutting out these larger circles and then obviously cutting out the material on the outside. So when it did that, the first thing it did is picked up material that, that wound itself around the bit. And you can kind of see as it would impact, you know, the spinning action tore up the material around here and also gave me a far bigger hole than what I really anticipated or wanted to have. Now again, since these are retaining, uh, you know, holes, I can just put a washer on it. Not, not a really big deal. Uh, so I'm not going to spend the time going back through. But I think this is really a good demonstration of, you know, a bit of a mistake I made or oversight in, you know, how it you know, screwed it up. So one of the things really important to think about is your tool flow or tool pathing in logic inside doing CNC's. And again, like I say, I don't do it every day of the week. Um, I do it a couple times a month. And a lot of times I simply have to relearn it. It's a little bit unlike 3D printing. It's, I think there's a greater complexity to CNC'ing than there is 3D printing. And because of the tolerances, is less to be forgiven, I think, here. And so uh, I kind of wanted to share that with you so that the peck drill operation really hosed me up because I didn't think about it. Uh, now, I'll still be able to use this piece, and you'll see it on the Tron X and everything because again I can use the outside and nobody's going to really overly see this inside piece for me to worry about because the other board kind of mounts on here sandwiching this but I wanted to share this with you guys so a couple good tips here number one try to make your design when working with this type of plastic uh, symmetrical so you can use either side if you screw up and probably preferably is to use the bottom side down now I did keep that in mind when I did this because I you know all bets are off when I work with styrene or ABS so I kind of expected a little bit of this but really not this bad the other piece Watch your peck drilling operations on softer materials. Again, this is the first time I've peck drilled uh, polystyrene. Usually I don't. Usually it's just cutting holes out. Now, I don't know if it really came out on the time lapse, but the, the, hole, the hole cutting actually came out pretty good. You notice there's very little uh, destruction around the holes. And what that mainly was from was after the peck drilling, the remaining material. So the holes, larger holes, actually came out good. The 150 is good. I think I could push it to 175, maybe even 200, uh, and still easily clear the chips and get good results. But you can see wherever I peck drill, total mess. So anyways, just wanted to share this CNC tip with you, especially working with the softer plastics like this, because again, this is a great value to, to get because it's so cheap. But man, oh man, sometimes, you know, it's a little bit difficult to work with. So anyways, Swag Shop's going to be up there. Subscribe over there. Let me know in the comments below what kind of tips do you have maybe for peck drilling? What could I have done differently? Again, if I were to do it again, it would have been one pass straight through the material because for, you know, 20,000 RPM spindle running that bit, you know, this polystyrene's nothing. It's like butter. So that's where I screwed up. Anyways, cheers. See you guys in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our